Hi, my name's Jerry. I'm a twin troller boat owner that has a Honda 2.3 horsepower motor on the back. I'm a lifelong fisherman and I'm kind of handy. And I'm hoping I'm handy enough to fix my motor. Come with me and see what happened and see if we can fix it. I sure hope so. Because I think I broke it. Full mode. Let me give you some information so you can understand what happened. I took the boat out fishing recently. This isn't going to be a fishing video. The fishing was terrible. No sense of you watching me just throw lures around. Because I didn't catch anything. Two little fish like that. That was it. But I took the boat out. I ran on this outboard probably 45 minutes. So I'm a good distance from the boat launch. And again, I'm not catching anything. So I decide, time to move. This motor is hanging on the back of the boat. Took me all the way out to where I wanted to go. No problem at all. As a matter of fact, I was in open water the entire way. In other words, no debris, no logs, no anything that I could run into. So I started the motor up, broom, and the motor ran just fine. I turned the throttle, which makes the motor accelerate. And on this motor, there is a clutch that engages the propeller. Unlike a normal outboard, you would put a little switch to go into forward or put it in reverse or neutral. This, when you accelerate the motor, the propeller kicks in, you accelerate more, you get to where you're going. Well, when I accelerated, an awful noise, a grinding noise, came out of the, the motor. I immediately put it back down to idle and the noise went away. I tried it again quickly and it made that awful noise again. To me, it sounded like it was coming out of this area. It was loud and it was a metal grinding noise, but did not sound like it had anything to do with the motor itself. So I brought it back down to idle. I tipped the motor up to get the propeller out of the water. I gave it a little throttle. The propeller kind of wanted to spin, but then that noise came real back real fast and I shut it off. So what did I do then? Well, I'm clearly not using this motor to get home. So I fished my way back to the boat launch using the two trolling motors that are built into this boat. So I have a way to get home. And it took me a little while because I fished on my way and I slowly got my way all the way back. Put the boat on the trailer and came home. And that's where the story goes. Outboard motors run with an engine up here and there's a shaft that runs all the way to here and some gears that make the propeller turn. Well, this shaft generally sits at the top of this uh, area here and has a, a spline. So the shaft has grooves cut into it that go into a coupling that makes the connection to the motor. And to me, that sounded like somehow this, the engine was turning and that spline was not engaged and making all that grinding noise. It was loud and it was up here on the top. That's what I thought. Even when I tipped the motor up a little bit out of the water to look at the prop, that grinding sound was so loud, it sounded like it was here. So when I got home, I'm thinking to myself, do I have the skills to fix this kind of an issue? Well, I've done a lot of boat work over the years. I've had these apart. 
I know what's inside here, and I thought, I could probably do this. Let's look into seeing what's wrong. This is my propeller. The propeller that came with this motor is a plastic propeller. Even though all the research said there is nothing but a plastic propeller for a smaller motor like this, I found this one. I have a video on me doing that and finding this one and installing it, and it works fantastic. The plastic propeller would get kind of uh, nicked up quite a bit, hitting the plants and grasses as a, that I'm trying to go through. So I wanted the metal propeller. This is aluminum. I pulled this off because I want to be able to spin that shaft to see if I can tell where the noise is. You pull this cotter pin here, the whole thing slides off, and there's a shaft that's sticking out and there's a hole through the middle of it with a shear pin on it. You take the shear pin out and then I can grab a hold of that shaft and I can spin it to do what I want to do. I didn't need to get that far. When I pulled this off, out came a small piece of metal and that's it. That's the shear pin. That's only about a third of the shear pin. So the shear pin is what broke off I tried spinning the shaft, everything sounded okay, it didn't make that noise anymore, wasn't any more damage that I could tell, and now all I gotta do is locate a shear pin and put a new one in. That's pretty easy. And if you own one of these motors or even a different brand, most of them come with spare shear pins, but not all of them give you a place to store that on the motor. And if you look, under here, there's a little rubberized uh, doodad under here that attaches to the bottom of the frame of the motor. And it has two brand new cotter pins, and in the middle there are two slots for brand new shear pins. All I had to do was remove the one shear pin, go back to the bottom, put it in the slot where the shaft sticks out that holds the propeller on. There's a groove in the back side of the propeller you put the propeller on and it has to fit into one of those grooves, the little shear pin sticking out. And then you put the pin back on, the cotter pin, and you're back in business. So that's how I got here. That's how I got it fixed. It wasn't a big deal. However, you cannot do that on the water. And why not? Well, this is the position the motor is in when it's on the boat, when it's running. My bad part is down here. I can tip it forward turn it like this and tip it into a horizontal position but I'm still in the boat here you cannot get all the way back here to undo this and do what you have to do you got to be someplace where you can stand back here and do this like on the shore or at least in shallow enough water that you could do that most motors come with some tools pliers screwdrivers and things like that and I've told you before, this is my emergency bag, and those tools are inside here. They come with a little pack like this, and it's got spare rope, screwdriver, spark plug wrench, pliers, a little wrench, and you could fix this with these tools, but you gotta have them in the boat, and you gotta have some place that you can get out of the boat and be back here. So if you're broken down on the water, unless you're with another boater that could pull up with another boat and get behind you and fix this for you, you really can't do this on the water. So what's the story behind all this? One, you have to have another way to get home other than using this motor if it's broken down. You could probably use a paddle Although, that would not be very easy, especially at the distance that I had to travel to get back. You could maybe be with another boater in case one of you broke down. In this case, this trolling motor got me home. You gotta make sure that you have your tools that came with the uh, thing and they gotta be someplace where they're accessible to you. So I keep them in my emergency bag and it's always in the boat. In my case, I used one of the two spare shear pins that are located underneath here. But 
I'm the kind of guy, I don't like going out without extras. So I contacted a Honda dealer and tried to get another pin. Well, my local Honda dealer only had one pin. And that cotter pin, even though there's two spares here, I thought I'd buy some extras. They didn't have any cotter pins at all. And he even made the comment to me, it's pretty unusual to break that shear pin. He's never sold one before and that's why he doesn't have many. But he sold me the one and it was difficult to get a part number for that shear pin and difficult to find a part number for the cotter pins. So I'm gonna show you this. Right across the screen, this is the Honda part number for the shear pin. And here is across the screen, the part number for the cotter pins. Should you need to locate them, you can use those part numbers. It kind of seems like you've got to go to a Honda outboard dealer to, to get those, and hopefully your guy has got some. But maybe you can find them someplace else. Maybe you can find them online. I had a difficult finding them, and the shear pin, even though it doesn't cost but a couple of dollars, was four times that cost just to ship it to me. So that didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I went this route. So subscribe if you haven't. Leave comments below. I try to answer them all. In the top corner, there's a bell up there. You can push that and you can get notice when I put out another video. And you can watch this video for something else entertaining on my channel. Be prepared. Thanks for following. Bye now. See you next time.